Today in the news, AMD gives us a whole lot of confirmations, Windows 11 is getting worse, and Intel has weird memory configs. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with AMD. Yesterday, the company essentially confirmed most of the releases we expected. To recap quickly, Zen 3 with 3D vCache is coming in early 2022, and Zen 4 is coming towards the end of 2022. While it wasn't explicitly mentioned, this new Zen 3 version of the CPU, which I'll be calling Zen 3D, would be compatible with AM4 motherboards. Probably not all of them, but at least those equipped with B550 and X570 chipsets. Although you can probably expect some manufacturing such as ASRock to sneak in a beta BIOS with compatibility for older motherboards. I mean, some of their X370 motherboards support the latest Ryzen 5000 series, and that was not in the books. Also, it was confirmed that Zen 4 would jump into the AM5 socket. And while a new socket means a new motherboard to buy, you don't have to worry about uh, your cooling configuration since the mounting solution for AM5 will be the same as AM4. So you can keep your cooler. They also corrected some leaks which said that Zen 4 would be PCIe Gen 4. Uh, it actually will be PCIe Gen 5, so that's cool. In this five year anniversary video, AMD also pointed out that small cores is out of the question for them for now. Instead, they will focus on firmware optimizations to get better power efficiency. Something else that caught my eye is their choice of fixed function hardware, specifically computer vision. That was the only thing that was mentioned. While they only said that these accelerators are something they are working on, we kind of already know that some are planned for chips in the future, specifically the chips codenamed Van Gogh and Rembrandt. Van Gogh is a weird one because it's kind of missing. We have have Vermeer as Ryzen 5000, Warhol as Zen 3D, and we have Cezanne and Lucienne on the laptop market. Van Gogh is currently only in the Steam Deck, and the only real accelerator here is the audio coprocessor. By the way, no, Van Gogh is not what's inside of the Xbox Series X and PS5. These are very, very custom processors. Whether we'll actually see a full chip for laptops using Van Gogh is still unknown, but at least we know that the upcoming laptop generation in ROM will feature a CVML accelerator, that's computer vision and machine learning. But we'll have to wait until 2022, when AMD usually announces their laptop chips, to actually know what this accelerator is and what it's capable of. 2022 is going to be an insane year for AMD hardware. That's if we can find them, of course, because the chip shortage. But at least we have a glimmer of hope since Apple had to slash their silicon order by as many as 10 million iPhones because other manufacturers like uh, Broadcom and Texas Instruments couldn't keep up with Apple's orders. This might give TSMC a little wiggle room and let's hope that AMD swoops in. Next up, we already talked about all the issues caused by Windows 11 before and how AMD systems have it worse. The core preference system is an issue, especially for more than eight core processors, and the cache got slowed down by a heck of a lot, specifically the L3 cache. Well, Microsoft released an update to Windows 11, and according to Tech Power Up, this new update makes things worse. They tested the latency for Windows 10 and Windows 11, both before and after the update and down, it's bad. On their 2700X test bench, the latency of the L3 cache with Windows 10 was about 10 nanoseconds. When we jump over to Windows 11, that goes up to 17 nanoseconds. And now with the update, it shoots up to 30.9 nanoseconds. Now at least, AMD has provided some information on the fixes. For the core preference issue, the fix is coming on the 21st of October. And for the cache issue, that would come on the 19th. So about a week until we see the patches. And then we got Intel in the news. Some information on how Alder Lake's memory works surfaced and it's pretty odd. Apparently, the DDR4 memory controller for Alder Lake can support up to 3600 mega transfers per second and tweaking the Uncore could get you up to 3866. All of this in gear one. As for DDR5, it can only run on gear two. 
In theory, what this means is that to see an actual improvement in memory performance, the DDR5 speed needs to be at 8,000 mega transfers per second or higher. And seeing that a 32 gig kit with DDR5 4800 is now selling for 350 bucks, getting a DDR5 compatible motherboard for your new Alder Lake CPU might be a costly mistake. Now, of course, we have to wait for reviews and testing of this sort of stuff to see if, uh, you know, the theory holds up. So it's gonna be interesting to see how DDR4 versus DDR5 motherboards will stack up with the same CPU. What do you guys think? Are you ready to jump into DDR5 as soon as possible? I know I won't. Anyways guys, that is pretty much it for today's video. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you wanna talk about today's stories. As usual, you're gonna have the things here that you can click on down below to subscribe up here for the latest video. Uh, that's pretty much it. Stay frosty and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.